Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. As I'm sitting here on the balcony overlooking the mountainside outside of Petruqueras, huh? and reflecting upon the passing of Holy Week and the coming of the great feast of Pascha, I want to reflect today and ask you to reflect with me on the meaning of the great feast of the resurrection and most especially the expression that is heard so many times throughout the week leading up to the feast of the resurrection here in Greece Kalianastasi which could be translated good resurrection indeed it is a blessed wish that we have a good resurrection and if we dig a little deeper behind the expression that is bantered about so easily on our lips we'll see great depth of meaning that can be explored and as it is oftentimes these wishes that one gives to each other in the church have great theological meaning oftentimes overlooked in our daily lives what most people mean when they wish someone a good resurrection throughout the week leading up to Pascha is that they pass their Sunday and their day off from work, maybe on Monday as well, they pass it joyfully as a feast. They have a good Pascha, a good day of rest. But if we look at it from a spiritual standpoint, we can see that in fact, Kali Anastasi, good resurrection, means something quite different. The resurrection of Christ did not bring only the resurrection of the just, but of the unjust. That is that every man and woman, every person born into this world, every son or daughter of Adam will be raised on the last day. Whether or not they believed, whether or not they lived a pious life, whatever life they lived and however they lived, they will rise on the last day and their soul will be united to their body and eternally they will live in that resurrected body. This is what the resurrection of Christ has brought to mankind. It is not so small as to pertain only to Christians, or to those who believe, or those who are just and holy, but pertains to every man. It is the resurrection of man, of mankind, of the nature of man. It is the resurrection from the dead, that is, the end of sin, which brings about death. And so, when we wish someone a good resurrection, the unspoken but inferred meaning is there is a bad resurrection. There is such a thing as a bad resurrection. That is, a resurrection not unto life, not unto joy, but a resurrection, as the Lord says himself, unto judgment. So there are two kinds of resurrections that man chooses by his way of life and his decisions in this life. A resurrection unto life, that is, that the soul is united to the body, and in this reunited human being, the eternal life is either experienced as joy, as light, as life, in the presence of the life giver, the light giver, or it is unto judgment, that is, that the life lived here did not, uh, was not a resurrected life. That is, it did not take part in the resurrection in this life. The soul, that is, was not resurrected from sin, did not abstain from sin, it was not joined to the life of Christ, it was not life in Christ but it was a life that was autonomous, that was given over 
to the dead end of the passions and therefore ended with those meaningless things that this world offers to us that end in death that do not have eternal significance and so the person who's given himself over to those things when his body is united to his soul and he is again a whole human being after the general resurrection and judgment well the joy of the resurrection the life the resurrection of the life is not experienced but rather those fearful and terrible words of the Lord are fulfilled and that is the gnashing of teeth the regret that will visit the person that has not chosen to obey his conscience has not chosen to live an ascetic life has not chosen to love truth above all else but has chosen to live for things temporal things passing things vain and things that ultimately do not give us life and so here we understand this very often spoken and heard wish Kaliyanastasi, good resurrection. We understand it has tremendous meaning for us in our life. We are wishing someone not that they pass their day well on the feast of Pascha, far from it, but that their resurrection be unto life, that their life here in this world be a resurrected life, a life united with Christ. What does that mean practically? Well, it means a lot, and we cannot cover it in five minutes. But to try to get to the depth of it, one might say it means that instead of approaching the life of the church in a religious manner, in a a sense of somehow fulfilling our quote-unquote religious obligations, instead of going to church because well that's what we're quote unquote supposed to do or uh, we go because on that day of the resurrection it's what we do because it's a custom or it's something that one does because well it's a quaint and neat uh, tradition or custom or experience that we like to have it means that we run to church and moreover we run to Holy Communion because in that we sense life resurrected life joy in that we find that the meaning of our life is fulfilled we find meaning in this life we go about this life with great retrospection discernment and it's not passed fruitlessly flightily but with great depth and meaning and if we're running out of joy the joy that bubbles up in one's heart when they realize that Christ died for them rose again and granted them this great gift of eternal life one that experiences the joy of Christ that heart that runs and cannot be kept away from the words of life and the bread of life that heart also runs to confession it sees itself it has knowledge of itself it understands itself before God before its fellow man that it has sin that we sin and that sin separates us from God when one feels the absence then one understands the great treasure of communion with God most of us however live in a kind of half asleep state we walk about this life 
not really examining much at all, but just feeling things. Some of us are quite given over to our senses, to the passions. Others very sentimental. Others are quite logical and rational. And these aspects of the soul dominate their life. And we're giving over to those. But that spiritual aspect, which is above all of that, which fills the heart with this knowledge, which is knowledge of oneself and of God, this changes everything. And one walks with great circumspection and looks about the world in a different manner, seeing it from an eternal perspective. And so they see that the great freedom one gains in confession then frees them from the bonds of sin to approach with joy and peace and repose of soul the great mystery of the Holy Eucharist and in that the great gift of the resurrection even in this life is given all of that of course is based on an ascetic life that is a life that has first passed through the cross one cannot have a good resurrection in this life if they've not first taken up their cross which means an ascetic life that's what it means to live the life of the cross to carry one's cross it means to live an ascetic life that is a life in which we are not living first for pleasure but we voluntarily forego pleasure sensual pleasure in this life for spiritual pleasure or spiritual joy in other words we forego the lesser the lower aspects of, of man's life in this world for things greater for things glorious higher which elevate man and fulfill him we forgo those things which are passing for things eternal things corruptible for things incorruptible as the prayer of Saint Basil's liturgy has it we live the mystery of the cross we're not looking back like Lot's wife at the city and the pleasures of Sodom and Gomorrah. We're not wanting to go back to Egypt like the Jews in the desert, remembering the onions and the meat that they ate when they were slaves in Egypt and wishing to go back to slavery if only they can enjoy the pleasures of the palate and of the flesh. That's not experiencing and living the mystery of the cross but wandering faithfully through the desert of this life with hope and patience that we will enter into the promised land as the faithful under Moses's direction did for 40 years in the desert that is living the mystery of the cross and already experiencing a good resurrection in this life I wish you indeed a good resurrection in this life 